All right, so we're stuck bang smack in the middle of the sugi of Mukta of Kalisha Malach to this. I do want to wish a mazel tov to one of our big listeners on Torah anytime, Rabbi Aaron Hirschman from Lakewood, on the engagement of his daughter, who um, actually because of yeshiva, it's actually because of yeshiva, because he helped out the yeshiva in a big way, and therefore the schus of hoping Torah helps you. That's how it works, Be'ez HaShem. Okay, so. He's a, he's a very choshvid, very choshvid. He listens to the shurim, so we want to give him to Daf Yomi Shem and Alach Shurim. So we should mazel tov. What's that? What is he? You know who he is? I do actually. Oh yeah, it's a big is a choshvid. Okay, so like this, Rabotai. We're in the middle of a klisha malach tole isin. If you remember, we discussed yesterday the geder. What is a klisha malach tole isa? And we basically left over as follows. We left over the idea that a klisha malach tole isa is what, Rabbi Yisai? Somebody help me out. Oh, excellent. It's something that's used for Issa Beheta. Which one is used more? Issa. Issa is used more. So it's a utensil, very important to mention, because we're going to go into Muksa Machmas Gufa, which is a whole different sugya. It's a utensil that's main Hishtamshah's usage is for Issa. Okay? A pen, a pair of scissors, a screwdriver, a hammer, a paintbrush. You know, electricity maybe we'll get to a little bit later. But the idea basically is this is miyuchad, it's used for Issa. Now, we decided, well, that's what we discussed, that was basically yesterday's shit. Now what I want to go into is the heterim. Okay, when is it muttered to use, how is it muttered to move on Shabbos Kodesh? So the basic halacha is like this. The basic halacha is you're allowed to move a kli shemalachtoi le'issa, letzorich gufoi, and letzorich makoimoi. But not mechama letzel. Let's loosely translate and let's go into it. You're allowed to move it letzorich kufoi for itself. If I want to use the item for a permitted usage, then it is permitted. That's pretty clear, right? So in other words, if I've got a hammer and I would like to crack open a coconut, I'm allowed to do that. Because there's no Issa in crack open or coconut. There might be an Issa in, you know, taking the, the screw on the side of a shtender and banging it in. That would be also to use the hammer. That's why it's a clean from Nachtal Issa, because wherever Shtamshus is the Issa. But if you have a situation of a hammer that you want to use it, Leheta, then I'm allowed to move it, pick it up, Letzorich Gufoi. Letzorich Mekoimai, it's in my way. It's in a place that I need, which we'll discuss. Also, Mota. Machama Letzel is Osa. What's Machama Letzel? Literally, from the sun to the shade. That means I don't need the kli, and it's not in my way. It, it, it's going to break. That's osa. Okay, now again, we're going to have to understand this on a little bit of a deeper level. But that's the basic idea. By the way, I have to mention to you the chazanish, right? The chazanish of Modika chazanish. The chazanish says that whenever it's muta to move a kli shemalachter le'issa, letzorich gufai, I don't need the shinoi. You could just pick it up. Right, I, I like doing this, right, what can I do? I, I'm, I'm one of those people, yes, I'm one of those people that will take the baby bottle and put it on the fleshic table, everyone's like, <gasps> that's milk eggs on a fleshic table, right? Or for example, I, I, was once, I was once in a hotel, and a guy, there was a whole group of Tamid Chachamim, you know, people with like big beards and stuff, and they were like, um, basically, they were standing around this electrical item, and they were dunning the shayla, no, you know, having a psalomdasha, you know? So you know me, I, I walked in there, I just picked it up and just, just moved it. Like, <gasps> you know, like, <laughs> like Shin Chesif Dalad, look it up, man. Simple, right? I've done the whole shine at Chazanish, let's pick it up. I do this with my kids, I want to teach my kids the halacha. There's a pen on their bed, so I don't know, do elbow and pick up the blanket. Chazanish says, no, if it's in your, if, if you're allowed to do it, which we'll get to, you pick it up. And you move it. The shy's way, can you move it too? We'll talk about that also. Can I, come, can I move it now all the way down to the kitchen? Or do I have to drop it by the edge of the bed? It's a different shyla, right? There are more deals with that. We're going to farm the film. The going, we'll talk all about that. But he's our But I can put him in a regular way. The chazanish says, once you have a head to move it, you can move it normally. You don't need the shinoi. So you have a pen that's in your, that, for example, you need for a head to usage, or you, it's in your way. You can pick it up normally. You don't have to do You don't need the shinoi. You pick it up, no problem. It's water. It's not a problem. Okay? Now, the only thing is there's a Mishtabura. The Mishtabura writes in, in Shin Ches, you've got in your base as follows. Says the Mishtabura, the Heilek of Chavetz Chaim is Machadish like this. And he bets and brings a Gemara in Shabbos Kuf Chobes, which the Shadzin deals with. If you have a head to one, are you allowed to use the Issa one? For example, I have a coconut opera, opener thing. 
if such a thing exists. Does it? There's no such thing as open. Is it, is they, they, they sell such a thing that opens coconuts? You think so? I don't know. This is a, <laughs> this is a coconut opener machine. Really? They, they do such a thing? I don't know. I don't, I, okay, let's say. Okay, so they do. They do. Am I allowed to use a hammer, Morty? Yes. Why? Yeah, but I have, I have a coconut opera opener. Oh, you have it? Yeah, I have one. In the drawer. Can I use the hammer? Yeah, because it's still used for that. Okay, so that's very nice. I hear the lambdas. Mr. Bruce says no. Mr. Bruce says if you have a heta one, why are you using the issa one? If you have a cliche malach to the heta, something that is made to open up coconuts, so why are you using the hammer? Mr. Bruce says not, not else bidyevet. I don't know the word bidyevet. He doesn't use that Russian bidyevet. If you've got one that's heta, why are you using the issa? Okay, you should know, not everybody owns this way. I'm saying the debit in for example, the Halika debit in in Ben Moshe, right? In Chedek HaSemenai in Hay, brings down the Mice and Dan Fisher passing this way. Also, Agav and the Revised and Talim, Megillah Sefer and others, they're holding it to be Mekel, but the Mishabur and Maisa says to be Machmeh. So asks from Moshe the following Kasha. How far does it go? What do you mean? I have one in the garage. I have to go down the garage to get it? Or, or, or like, it has to be in the kitchen? Like, what's the gather? You hear the Kasha? Like, what, what did the Mishnah Bura mean when he said, if you have a heta one, now you have no heta to take a Kishon Malach to the Issa? So Moshe says, oh, you don't have to be, you don't have to go through Tircha to look for the heta one. If you're going to go through Tircha to go get it, that you don't have to do. That will never Machai to do. If it's go down to the garage to find it, whatever, that you don't have to do. If it's right there in the kitchen, then obviously use the heta one. Why are you using the Issa one? Right? That's what Moshe says when it comes to those things. And not only Rav Moshe, Daim Padva from England, in Chesha Ve'evod passing this way, in Chelek Gimel Simen Pei, from Chan Knievsky Shlita, Oscar passing this way. Although you should know, there are those who are machmeh, even the hold you should be terech, right? Rab Chaim Noam, the Ksosha Shulchan, in Simen Klal Kuf Uches, brings this down, that he holds that you should be terech to go on. But Amai Salach and Amai you don't have to be worried, that as long as there's a heter one there, you should try to use the heter one if it's available and it's easy. Now, the question is like this, okay? Interesting question. What does it mean you need the heter one, right? So I have a Klisha Malach Tele Issa, and I need to use it, not we'll get to. I need to use it. Who needs to use it? Who needs to use it? That's the Shaila. Right? So number one, the, 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 the post can discuss this, the Teladovit says this Mufurish, that even for an animal is mutter. Right? For whatever that may be. Or what about for a child? That's posh for a child, it's okay. For example, we said that a klisha malachtal is a rattle, a baby rattle. You can't you're not allowed to pick that up, stump. But let's say there's a baby that needs it, and if you give it to the baby, the baby will stop crying. That's okay, because a baby needs it, and that's mutter for a baby, and therefore it's not a problem whatsoever. What about for a guy? So Bishlam and Zalman says that's also. I can't pick up a Kalisha Malach to the Issa for a guy. That's also. I, the guy needs it, and it's mutter. No, that's not what they meant. And therefore, that's going to be a problem to do that for a guy in that case. Let's move on, Rabbi Isai. Hashava Saveda. We mentioned this yesterday. I've got a pen on the floor. I see the name, I'd love to return it to him, but a pen is mukta. And if I walk away, who knows if it's going to be there after Shabbos. I'd like to pick it up, and I'm going to go and return it to him. Maybe after Shabbos, I'll put it on the side, whatever it may be. What's the halacha? So, the Shemir Shabbos is that's called the Tzorich Kufay. Even though I don't need the pen, but I need the pen for the Shabbos Aveda. So I need the item for a head to usage, which is a Shabbos Aveda. The Maisa, a lot of poets came from Zalman himself, and Nisan Karel and Zatzal, and others held to be Machmeh, that if you need it for a Shabbos Aveda, that is not considered to be a good heta. Another example, I asked this for a Zatzal. What happens if your father says to you, Mordi, pick up the pen? That's Kibbut of Aim. Does Kibbut of Aim turn into Tzorikufay? I, I need to pick up the pen to be, to be Makai, my father's. Sivoy, no? What did I know? No? 100%. Not mask him? Why not? 100%. I need to pick up the pen in order to listen to him. Okay, but yes? No. That's good? No, no. Yes, no. My son itself is an Isser. It's like him telling me to eat. Oh! Gavalde! Comes along, Yaakov, and Gavalde can eat. And so what do you mean? He's also not allowed to pick it up. The Gemara says this one. Divya Rav, Divya Talmud, Divya Mishamin, and who you can listen to? Avada it's Asr. Rafa told me this himself as well. Told me Avada that's not considered to be good enough. 100% not. What about, for example, we spoke about this yesterday, the Chosen pen. The Chosen pen. I want to show it to everyone. I don't want to use it. I want to, I want to show the oil in my Chosen pen. You're allowed? Is that called a Tzorikufay? Well, there's not nothing wrong showing someone a pen. 
Is that called Tzorah Gufay? You did you? What are you saying? You're thinking about it. You're like... The answer is going to be no, but it should be yeah. What, what, why should it be yeah? Give me, let me, let me, why should it be yeah? Because you, you need it for your self-esteem to show people that you have a nice oh. home. <laughs> self-esteem. Okay, that's a whole different Shaila. That we'll talk about a different time. Ah. Uh, if a person looked at his Masechta the same way he looks at his Chos and watch the whole time to make sure it's still there and he checks his Masechta to make sure he still knows it the same way he makes sure his watch is still there then Halavai. But upon him, I asked this question and he told me that I've had a nisht. Why? And we'll talk about this now a little bit more now. It's not a Tzorok Shabbos. Tzorok Kufa has to have a Shaykh as the Tzorok Shabbos. There's no real Tzorok Shabbos in this case. Let's move on, Rabbi Say. That's Tzorok Kufa. So again, a Klisha Malach Isa that I need, that Tzorok Kufa, meaning for a permitted usage, is Mota. By the way, a pot. A pot is Mukta, right? How you allowed to move a pot? Because what do you mean? I need to put food in it in order to store it in the fridge, as one example. So a pot is going to be muttered to move when it is the tzorich gufoy. Stam to move a pot is asa. If you have a pot on the side over there and you want to clean up the kitchen, we'll get to that in a moment. But in a regular case, stam to move a pot, asa. Because it's a clean shark to isa, you can't move it. You're not allowed. However, if it's the tzorich gufoy because I need to fill up the pot with food, that's okay. What about... That's okay. So gufoy, my neighbor, that's fine. Somebody else is okay. A guy is an exception. If a guy neighbor wants to borrow it, then I can't do because that's not really a Tzorik Ufoy. Now, let's move on. Tzorik Mekoymoy. What's that? Darik Yishon. Darik Yishon means you're upset if you say no. Okay, it could be. Uh, if that's mamish where you're holding with your neighbor. Then he's going to be upset if you don't give him your pot. But Al Capone, let's move on to the next set. And then I want to ask the item a very interesting shayla. Tzorik Mekoymoy. Okay, so I have a klisha malach to the Issa. I come to my table, my place in shul. I want to start davening shachris, or not davening shachris, obviously I want to do shnei mikra before shachris, because I want to be ready for shachris by doing a bit of shnei mikra before shachris, and there's a pen on the table. Rabotai, there's a pen on the table, a pen is a klisha malach to isa. What is the din? So there are two heterim here. Heter number one is, I need this place. Right? I need this place. So the Mishabur, I mean, the Poiskim discussed the Shaila, Ravazan and Shevet Alevi, as a Chuv and Chedekalas and Makupe Zainz and Gotendas, where he writes that if you've got another place, why are you moving it? In other words, you have to sit there, you can sit next door. Or if you have to take this chair, move the next chair. In other words, if it's very easy to sit somewhere else or use another place, then use another place. But if I need this place, then I can move it. For example, if there's a pot on the counter and a pot is mokta, and I need to work because I need to prepare for the Shabbos Suda and I need to set up the meal, whatever it is. So I haven't got enough counter space. So then I can take the empty pot, which is Mokta, because it's a Klisha Maktalisa, and I can move it and I can put it away into the cabinet or move it onto another counter, on the table, whatever it may be. Why? Because I need the place. Whenever I need the place, then there is no problem. Again, if you've got another place easily enough, then you have no problem whatsoever and then it is okay. But again, if you've got another place, then it's going to be a problem. I'll give you an example. What another shy like this? What happens if you have a nail? So my sister, someone came to me, has a nail stuck in the back of his shoe. Now, a nail is mukta. It's a klitsch malach issa. It does issa. It builds. It puts things together. So it's mukta. So my question is, am I allowed to take it out? What's the heta? It could be dangerous. It's not dangerous. It's not hurting me. It's not dangerous. Nothing. It's just annoying. Every time I walk, clink, clink, clink. You know? What's the heta? Is there a heta? Maybe there's no heta. It should be yes, but we don't know why. This one's the other way around. How does it work? It should be yes, it should be yes but we don't know why. Why should it be yes? What's the yes? Tell me the yes. Because it's. I need my shoe. I can wear. Them. I'm wearing my shoe. It could go deeper. Is it like mechas? I'm not worried about. There's no. There's no psychotic involved. Nothing's gonna happen. No one's gonna get cut. There's no bleeding. You're gonna ruin the floor. So my shaila is like this. I don't want it there. Is that a heter? I don't want it there. Is that a heter? No. It's not a heter. I don't want it there right now. Why not? I, I'll give you an example, right? Let's say you've got guests coming and you left your wallet in the, middle of the, in the middle of the dining room. It's not bothering anybody. You don't need the place. Nothing's happening. I'd have to move it. I just don't want it there. It's not nice. It's not covered shabbos. Yeah. It's allowed? Let me ask another question. Okay, like we're gonna we're gonna have to end with this because there's a lot of shadows that come into this, a lot of long source that goes to this. We're gonna have to look at some of the machikas we're showing him to understand this. Let me ask you a question. What happens if your child is a modika kasha? such a maisa. We should never know of such maisa. Lo such a maisa. Your three-year-old child picks up a permanent marker and goes over to the curtains. Ah, every parent's dream. It's a good schmack, no? 
You're watching the scene. It's like it's, it's going in slow motion. You're watching a three-year-old son with this. He takes off the lid slowly and he goes over to the brand new curtains with the permanent marker. Now hold on a second. Let's just freeze it for a moment. It's a klisha malach isa, right? The pen, the marker is a klisha malach isa. Tzorich gufoy, do you need it le tzorich gufoy? I don't think so. Do you need it for mekoymoy? What if I don't want it there? Is that considered to be tzorich mekoymoy? You mean in his hand? Uh, yeah, I don't want it in his hand right now. There's no chazam kiss. Huh? So we need the place. I don't want it to be there. Is that good enough? Okay, so Rabbi said, Be'ez Hashem, tomorrow, we're going to go through the sugya. It's a big sugya. Join us tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.